All right, we're ready to set up our team functionality and team coloring in this video. Uh, but before I get started, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these actors that we had placed in the world from our previous uh, videos. We don't need these anymore now. We're spawning our own starting units and our starting building. All right, and then what I'm going to do is open up my game mode base. And I need to uh, create a couple of variables in here. Um, we're going to create one called team number. I'll set that to an integer. And I'm going to make another variable called team colors. I'll set the type here to linear color. And I'm going to make that an array. And I'll compile here. And I'm going to add some elements here to the array. I'm going to add four elements. And I'll set these to red to one and alpha to one. And the second element here, I'm going to set green to one and alpha to one. Third element, blue and alpha to one. And in the fourth element here, I'll set red and green and alpha to one. So I've set up these four team colors here. And so what I want to do now is I want to pass the team number and team color to the setup player start function here. So I'm going to go to my interface, set up player start, and I'll add two more inputs here. Team number and team color. And I'll make these integer and linear color. And just a single linear color this time. OK, I'm going to close that. And now I've got these extra pins. I can send the team number and team color. And so I'll do that by plugging in here the team number variable. And for team colors, I'll have to drag in the team colors variable, say get, and drag from that and get a copy. And I'll drag in team number as the index here. And so we'll get the color at that index, plug it into team color, and that's pretty much done. Now all we need to do is increment the team number so that the next player that joins gets the next uh, team number. I'll grab that in here, say plus plus, and plug it in. All right, uh, so I'm done with the game mode base here. I'll compile, close, and the next thing that I'll do is let's go into the uh, player controller, and we'll find the event player start. Now I've got these extra pins from the team number and team color incoming. So I want to set those variables here. I'm going to just drag this over a bit. And I'll just drag from here and say promote to variable. And uh, same thing for team color, promote to a variable. All right. So now we're loading up our team number and team color before we do our spawning of our buildings and units. And uh, that's what I want to do is pass that team number and team color to these buildings and units. So the next thing I'll do here is open up the parent unit class and put a variable in here for team number and team color. And I'll make that an integer. And I'll make the team color here a linear color. And for both of these, I need to select here uh, instance editable, expose on spawn, and replication replicated. And so I'll do that here as well. OK, and I'm also going to just go back to the player controller here, set my team number here to replicate it as well. So the client can uh, occasionally ask the player controller uh, which team number it is, and they'll have the right information. Uh, now I'm going to open up my building parent class. And I've got to put the variables here as well. Team number and team color. And uh, integer for team number, linear color for the color. All right, uh, again here, instance editable, expose on spawn, replicated for both of those. Perfect. OK, uh, so I'll close these for now. And what I want to do here in the player controller, I've got the spawn player loadout macro open here. And uh, on the uh, spawn node here, since I checked expose on spawn, 
uh, for those two variables. If I just refresh this node here by right clicking, we can see I've added these team number and team color, and I can load these up here at this stage of spawning the actor. And that's what I want to do. I'm going to drag in here team number and team color. All right. Uh, and so I need to do the same thing here for all of these three actors as well. To make sure I have compiled my unit class. I didn't compile here. Uh, we'll go back. All right. So I'll just set these three units up the same way. Feed in the team number and the team color. OK, so I've done that here. I'm just going to compile and close that. I'm just going to go back to my uh, parent unit class, actually. And uh, now that we've, been, uh, we've got the unit loaded up with the team number and team color when we spawn it, I can do something with that on the begin play node. So I'm going to make some room here. I'll back this up, and I'm going to make this into a sequence. I'll just drag down here, and I want to say create a dynamic material instance. And I'll make sure I get this one that's blank, not the selection decal or the components here. And what I want to do is plug in uh, to the parent the existing material for the mesh. So I'm going to get mesh here from the component list, get material, and we'll plug that into the parent. And now I want to drag from the parent. And what I'm going to do is set a vector parameter. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, this in materials, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're not, I'll just show you quickly what we're, what we're doing here. Uh, so I'm going to open up, for example, here my unit style 1. And we set this up in the second episode of the series. And I'll select the uh, viewport here and the mesh. And we can see we selected the mannequin for the mesh. And then we set the materials to uh, the material sphere here for element 0. Uh, and that's this uh, gray on the top, yellow on the bottom thing. And so I'll just open this material up. I'll double click here. OK. So this material works by uh, lerping a base color between 0.25 gray and this yellow color. That's how you get this effect here. So I can easily change this color, and that'll change the bottom half of this material. Uh, so uh, for a good example of uh, team coloring, uh, it will always pretty much be done at the material level. And so what I can do in this example is I can right click this node, convert to parameter, and I'll just name this something like team color. Now I can refer to this node in a blueprint in a dynamic instance of this material, and I can set whatever color I want. And that's just what we're going to do. I'm going to save this. I'll close it. And back in the parent unit class, I'm going to drag from this dynamic material instance and say set vector parameter value. And the name is team color. I just made that parameter. And I'm going to pipe in our team color variable. All right, so then one more step is I just need to set the mesh to now use that new uh, dynamic instance. We'll say set material. And I'll drag in the return value here from the dynamic instance. OK, so I'll grab these nodes here. I'm going to say uh, set up team color. Maybe move this over a bit like that. All right, and uh, so I need to do the same thing for our building. And I'll take a look here at our building setup. So I'll close these. I'll open parent building and the first building. Get a full blueprint here. And I'll look at the viewport and select the mesh here. And we'll look over here. We selected a random shape here from the engine shapes. And those shapes are all pretty much assigned to this material uh, or have this material assigned basic wall. That's why it's just this off-white color here. So let's look at that material. Double click and open it. And uh, all right, so we already have a parameter here. 
Um, I don't even need to convert this. It's already set up. The name is color, so I'll need to change that to team color. And now we can uh, address this material in the same way. So I'll just close that. OK, and in the parent building class here, uh, on begin play, we're going to make pretty well the same function here. I'll drag here and say create dynamic material instance. I'll drag in a copy of the building mesh component here. Get material. We'll plug that to the parent. OK, I'll drag from here and I'll say set vector parameter value. And the parameter name was team color. Drag in the team color here. And same thing, we'll grab building mesh again here. Say set material. And I'll drag in this return value here. All right, so let's move this over a little bit here. grab these nodes and we'll say set up team color. OK, so I'll close that for now. And we'll take a look at our results here. I need to go back to our main menu map here. And I'll press play. We'll host here. OK, and we've got our red color be assigned here to the building and assigned to our material on the units. So, so far, so good. I'll just Alt-Tab here and Join. And we've got our green color assigned to our second player. All right, perfect. So one more thing we need to do here now is we want to use our team number to determine uh, so that we can't uh, select units from the other team. So what I'm going to do is make a couple of new functions here in the interface. And the first function is going to be just called get team with one output. And I'll set that to uh, team number, and the type will be an integer. And then I'm going to make another function here called is on my team question mark. And we'll use one input and one output. The input is going to be team number. And the output is going to be uh, whether it matched or not. So we'll just say uh, my team question mark and make that a Boolean. OK, so I'll close that for now here. And I want to open my unit parent class and find under interfaces here the get team function. I'll double click that. And this is going to be very easy. We're just going to return our team number like so. Oops. All right. And so I need to do the same thing here in the building unit class. I'll find the uh, building parent class, the get team function, and drag in the team number. So now our blueprints can request the team number directly from a unit or a building. And then I'm going to go ahead and open my player controller. And I'll close this macro here. And I want to find the under the interfaces here, I'm going to find the is on my team function. And another pretty simple function here, we're just going to check if the incoming team number is equal to our team number. And we'll plug that result into my team. OK, uh, so now we can go into our marquee HUD blueprint. And this is the area where we're selecting units that are underneath our selection rectangle. So what I'm going to do is just grab these nodes here, drag everything over here. And uh, before we select a unit, we'll check if it's on our team. So I'll drag from the array element here. We'll say get team. And I'll plug in that execution node. And I'll right click here, get player controller. And I'll drag from here and say uh, is on my team. And so I can plug in this team number as an input. And it'll compare to our team number and see if this is on our team or not. So we'll use a branch. 
and we'll only select the unit if it's on our team. All right. And so that covers uh, units. And so now I'm going to go ahead and make the cha uh, same change here for uh, selecting buildings. And we select buildings here in the player controller. On the event graph here, I'll find the left mouse button event and our handle building click macro. I'll open that up here and uh, we'll grab select this and move everything this way. And I'll do the same thing here. From the hit actor, I want to check uh, get team. And if the actor is on our team, we want to select it. So we'll get our player controller. And I'll say is on my team. And we'll plug in that team number and get a branch. OK. And uh, so that should work. Let's go check it out. OK, so I'll grab my own units here. And uh, let's go uh, just sort of to the middle here. And I'll Alt-Tab here and join with the other client. And uh, let's say grab these units and move to the middle. All right. And so now I can't select any enemy units. I can only select my own units. So that's properly working. Uh, and same thing here with buildings. I'll check this out here. I can't select anything here. Go back to my own building. And all right, that works. OK, so that covers uh, team setup and team coloring. And uh, now the next thing we're going to look at is how we can start causing these units to attack each other by giving them maybe a sight radius and noticing enemies within their sight and uh, auto attacking or whatever. OK, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.